Hi, welcome to Simply Ask Media. Today we're going to take a look at the new Synology RS18016 Access Plus. This is a new 12-bay NAS from Synology, uh, meant for enterprise class. It's a large scale enterprise NAS, um, 12 bays, you can expand it up to one petabyte of data using all the expansion units that you can tack onto this unit. Um, we'll take a look at that when we take a look at the back of the NAS. Um, so the NAS is, is what it is, it's a 12-bay NAS, Intel Xeon E3, 3.3 gigahertz quad-core processor, uh, very powerful, 8 gig ECC RAM stock that can be upgraded to 32 gig if you need. Um, that way you get fast storage and reliable data access point. The reliability of this unit is new, but we, we expect it to be as reliable as all the other Synologies have been. Um, the architecture is not new in this NAS, it's what we're used to already, so we're not worried about the reliability of new things being implemented. However, the machine in itself is completely new. Um, so, what we have here is, it's a new class of its own, it's not an upgrade from any machine. The RS10613 is still around, we do anticipate an upgrade for that unit at some point, not necessarily this year, it may be next year. Um, so this NAS really is by itself. Uh, it's 12 bays, redundant power supplies, redundant um, SAS ports at the back for your expansion units, redundant RJ45s. Um, we'll talk a bit more about that when we go around the back, just taking a look at the front. It is what you're used to in Synology at the front, I'm going to pull it back here a little bit. Um, so you've got your bays at the front that lock, and then you've got your power button, um, and your reset button, and your indicator LEDs. Um, it's basically what we've always been used to in Synology, they haven't changed anything in that aspect. Remember this now supports up to 8 terabyte drive, so even on this on this 12 bay alone without any expansion expansion units, you can get some you can get a whopping capacity out of the NATs. Um, doing it in a RAID 5 with a 10 gig network, the um, the speeds are, are, are ridiculous. Um, they're faster than anything we've seen on the 12 bay NAS before. So because of that, we really do recommend it, especially if you're in a VM environment and you need fast access storage. Um, if you're in, let's say, an environment where people from outside are uploading to your NAS, um, let's say they're on the field, this will be great for fast access storage for them as well. Uh, remember Synology also has their cloud platform, so you can forward all your information on the cloud, um, that way you can remotely access the NAS without the need for a VPN or anything like that. Um, taking a quick break, I'll spin the unit around, we'll take a look at the back of the unit and discuss a bit more about the in-depth features of the NAS. Okay, bringing you around to the back of the NAS. Um, as you can see, it's what we're already familiar with in the Synology. There are a few little changes, but aside from that, it's basically what we're used to with the 10613. Um, on this side, you've got your two redundant power supplies. They are redundant. They do not have to be plugged in at the same time, but I mean you'll break the point of the redundancy. You plug both of them in. If one of them fails, the other one will keep the unit up. Then you don't rely on each other to power up the unit. You can power up with just one of these plugged in. Before you go through the middle, coming onto the left hand side, right at the edge here you'll see a little bit of stretch from the arm short. Uh, on the left hand side you've got your expansion sports. These now come stock on the unit, you don't need to buy a card anymore um, and have that installed so you don't lose any of your PCI slots. Consequently those are sitting right next to them, you've got two of them this time. So you have the ability for the first time on a Synology to put dual 10 gig NICs in the card, um, into the, into, into the card, into the NAS. Um, so basically that will allow you to have four 10 gigabit ports, so you can match up the 10 gigabit ports, um, you can do aggregation on them. We will have to verify for you whether you can do aggregation over four ports together, but for sure you can do f aggregation over two ports on each card. Uh, typically with PCI Express expansions, you cannot bond two different cards together, it's never worked. Um, we always end up with failures. Uh, it's not that switches don't support them, it's so much the architecture in the, in the NAS doesn't support it. It's not something that you do on the next gen. Really. Um, aside from that, that's your expansion unit. So again, that's where you can get up to your one petabyte of data space. Um, it's a silly amount of data, really you only need it if you're in a data center. Typically we'll tell you once you get to about 500 terabytes it's time for a new NAS architecture because you don't want to save all your data into one NAS one petabyte's worth without having a backup and backing up one petabyte's not fun. But that being said, you do have the ability to expand all the way up to one petabyte if you do need to. Um, going through to the middle of the NAS, looking just here on the side, there's one, two, three, four RJ45 ports, so that allows you to have a four gig uplink. These ones can all be aggregated together because they are on board. Um, so you have the ability now of four one gig uplinks as well as four 10 gig uplinks. Um, typically, if you're running 10 gig, though, we only use the 1 gigs for management, but you can use them for NAS access by all means. Um, right next to the 
port on my right, so your left, will be um, your two USB 2.0s and your two USB 3.0s. Again, what we're used to, again, they're not hosts as usual, um, just used for either attaching a monitor and a mouse, mainly those for the USB 2.0 ports. Um, on the USB 3.0 ports, you can put your external hard drive, back it up to the NAS, um, back it up or back the NAS up to the external hard drive if you've got certain files you want to make sure you've got a double copy of. Um, the other thing the external hard drive is very useful for that we don't normally mention, but we should, is um, people that are out on the field. Uh, typically, we send them out with external drives to sell and save their data. Um, people that are working remotely can save their data, external hard drive, send it all into you. You just plug it in at the back and you let it back up. Um, once you've done the backup on the web GUI once, it will re-recognize that hard drive every time you put it in. Um, so it will do that backup automatically after that. Uh, of course, there's a checkbox where you detect to say, check to say when you do um, insert this hard drive, do a backup. So the first time you do that, there's a bit of a setup, but after that, there's not. But that's per different um, external drive. So if you've got five of them, you'll have to do that five times over before it becomes an automatic procedure. But again, that's a, that's a great feature that we don't normally discuss, especially when you're out on the field. That's really the easiest way of getting the data onto the NAS rather than having to sit in a PC and drag and drop it over always. Um, aside from that, that's really the back of the unit. You've got your comms port here. Um, that's really, if you're in a server room, if you've got comms, then you can hook it up to a monitor to console into the NAS. Uh, again, that's where your USB 2.0 ports will come in because you'll have your keyboard and mouse attached. Aside from that, the comms port isn't really used for anything at all. Um, Synology may ask you to use it at some point for debugging if you do have an issue with the unit. Um, it just helps them in terms of helping you run a few commands on the NAS to see if they can get it up and running without having to replace anything. Um, but that being said, we hope this machine is very reliable and you don't have to do that at all. Um, but that being said, that's the back of the NAS. We'll bring you around the front, summate the video and make sure you've got all the information you need. Okay, bringing you back around to the front. So that's basically our video on the new Synology RS18016 XS Plus. Um, you'll also hear it being called the 1801 XS, 18016 XS Plus. Um, it's a bit of a tongue twister, we'll get used to it once we're used to the NAS. Um, this is their new large scale enterprise NAS. It's, it's, it's a great NAS, very fast. Um, really when it comes to large scale enterprise, reliability is important, but speed is really what we look for. Um, we don't expect this not to be reliable, but we're going to always drum home about the speed because it, it is a fast NAS. Um, and that's really what we need when we're sitting it there. It's fast enough to be your first level of storage. Typically we don't ever endorse anything to be first level of storage for enterprise businesses. Um, NAS should always be your secondary storage. But that being said, in this instance, because of the speed of the unit, because of the spec of the unit, because it is more of a server grade NAS, um, definitely great for your primary storage. You can also use it as your secondary or tertiary storage as well, of course. Um, if you do use it for your primary storage, remember, have a backup. Always have a backup of your NAS. Um, so even if you don't buy it immediately, buy a second one. Not necessarily the same NAS, just make sure you've got the same data space available to back it up. Um, that being said, remember, these excess pluses are capable of high availability. So if you do think about buying a second NAS, it may be worth getting exactly the same architecture and having HA available. Um, that will use one of the SAS ports at the back, so bear that in mind when you do do that, because the cables do cross over using the SAS ports. But that being said, you've got two of them now, so you can still use an expansion unit, but if you tack on an expansion unit to your head unit, you have to tack it onto your second unit. The architecture must be exactly the same. Um, aside from that, that's really our notes. If you have any other questions about the NAS, as always, give us a, give us a call, 407-960-4690. We'd love to hear from you. Alternatively, you can email us, sales at simplynas.com. If you did like, enjoy the video, hit the like button. We do like seeing you hit the like button. It just spurs us on gets to getting some more videos done for you. Um, if you don't like it, leave us a comment. We want to know why. Um, don't shy away from giving us criticism. We love our criticism. Don't be mean, but we do love our criticism. We like to get better for you guys. Um, and of course, subscribe to the channel. That way you get notifications when we do post these videos. They are good for you. They give you a little bit of a technical insight into the NAS before you even call us, before you even buy it. That way you know what you're looking into without having to wait for us. Um, but that being said, if you don't have a clue, give us a call. That's why we're the NAS experts. Give us a call, 407-960-4690. Again, email sales at simplynas.com. Thank you and have a wonderful day.